afternoon. Welcome. <clears throat> to Soul Food International Ministries, Incorporated. Hallelujah. God bless you. Sorry, y'all. Ah, Jesus. Sorry, guys. Bless you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to get started. God bless you, Deaconess Dollison. Second, maybe one last adjustment. Uh, okay. 
Okay, Lord, how can I do this? Sorry, y'all. My little tool I used to keep the camera from being crooked. I couldn't, oh well, I ain't gonna say I couldn't find it. I, I thought it might not have been in the room, so I was gonna go without it, but I just, the Lord just showed me where it's at. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, y'all. I know how the devil operates. So I already know when that I start talking, people gonna automatically think that I'm talking about them. And what, the, what I have to say today is literally for not a them, not a particular person, but for us all. I'm gonna say that again. I know how the devil operates. Because the Bible tells us that the Lord would not have us ignorant concerning the devil's devices. And so one of the reads, one of the weapons that Satan uses, I hope y'all hear me good. One of the weapons that Satan uses against God's people is the weapon of offense. He knows that if he can offend you, he can move you out of your position and out of your place and out of territory. Oh, God. And as a prophet of God and as um, the mouthpiece of God, what I have to say today has nothing to do with an individual. But our church collectively, and to be quite honest, I didn't even want to share this post today because... You know, since we've been coming on this in this platform since April of 2020, the Lord allowed us to shift and to start having online services on resurrection, what some people call Easter Sunday of 2020. And we've been in this setting and in this in coming before the Lord in this way since that time. And um And um, one second, y'all. Turn this off. Uh, actually, we go. We've been uh, in this setting for, um, since that time, and thank you, Jesus. I don't even remember why, but what made me say that. Um, but we've been coming on live in this way, and so I know now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, we've been coming on live in this way, and since that time last year, um, the Lord has been using me in a way that he's been speaking to the church at large because he knows that we're speaking to the world in this platform versus us being in, you know, a building and it's just us as members of this particular body. Um... But sometimes God has to take our focus off of talking to the world and he needs to talk to us as soul food. And so I didn't even want to share this post on my personal page because I ain't talking to the world today. I'm talking to soul food. If the world happens to see it and they can get something out of it, then God be praised. But I came to talk to the church that God called me to lead today. And so let us go before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray, y'all. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you that there is none like you. 
Father God, I have no authority. I don't care how many times I've been ordained. I don't care if I've been, they, they gave me a paper that says pastor this, apostle that, prophet this, whatever, elder that. God, I do not have the authority to speak to your children except it be you speaking through me. Lord, I am nothing without you. I am only your mouthpiece. I am only your servant. I am only that which you have called me to be. And I can't be any less and I can't be any more. And so, God, I say openly to the earth on this live broadcast that I can't speak unless you speak. It does not matter that I carry the title and the function and the position of pastor. I can only speak when you speak and what you permit. And so, God, in this moment, I ask that you speak. I ask that you would allow my words to be formulated with grace. I ask that you would have mercy on me. I ask that you would help me to lead your people in the way that you have called and instructed and have given me to lead them. I pray that the spirit of offense would have no place in any of us. But that, Lord God, that you would allow me to speak the truth in love. And that your people would understand the heart of, your, of their pastor. And that you would allow your people to receive whatever you should say without offense. For the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that those whom you love, when you chasten them, it is because you're dealing with them as children and not as bastards. So, Father, we thank you today and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. This is an interesting song that the Lord chose. It says, draw me. Not to a building. Not to a setting, not to a function, but just simply back to you, God. Draw me. And if don't nobody else need that, I need that today. Many of you know that God has given me the grace to write a book and it is now available. And I didn't say that in this moment to patch that in or some type of promotion. I'm saying that for this reason. It does not matter how many accomplishments we have. It does not matter if the world knows your name. It does not matter if God give you your boo. And it does not matter how happily married you are with your husband or with your wife. It does not matter what your bank account is sitting on, what you driving outside. No matter what your house and how much square footage you have. If we don't have... The intimacy of God's relationship, we ain't got nothing. And so, Lord, draw us. Draw us back to you. Draw us to that secret place again. Draw us to that intimate place again. Draw us to the beauty of your holiness again. Let everything that has come to destroy what you've done in our lives and who you've shown yourself to be, be brought subject in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because our whole pursuit is to see you one day. We didn't give up the world. We didn't make the sacrifices that we've made to ultimately still miss you, God, and not spend our eternity with you in your presence. So draw us back to that personal place. Draw us back to that real place. Draw us more closer than we've ever known we've ever seen, we've ever experienced, we've ever been before. Lord, you know my heart. I don't care if the whole world know Pastor Williams' name. If I can't find you, 
And if I don't know your presence on a regular, that means nothing to me. Hallelujah. If the whole world pat me on the back, but I can't find you, it means nothing. Hallelujah. So draw us. Draw us to that deep place. Well of living water. The Bible says that out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water, Lord God. We're thirsty for you. We need you, Jesus. Lord, ever since I've been pastoring this church, I've been preaching to your people and telling them you got to know God for yourself. That this whole walk, this whole thing is about relationship with you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, you've given me the commandment. You've given me the charge. You've given me the responsibility to lead by example. And God, I refuse to be so busy. I refuse to be so busy. And being so productive. And writing books and being a somebody's assignment and all of this stuff. And being somebody's pastor. Hallelujah. And my own personal relationship goes suffering. I refuse. I refuse. I need you. I need you. Sometimes you got to make it personal. Watch us, God. Forgive us of all of our sin. Blot out our transgressions. Create in us, God. Clean hearts. Renew within us your people right spirit. Wash us by the washing of your word. We desire to be holy, God. We desire to be holy, God. Without spot or blemish. No compromise, holy. Not having a form of godliness, but missing true holiness, but holy, for real holy, holiness that produces power, hey, shut that by higher, holiness, holy and sire. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Y'all don't mind me. I don't have much to say today, so we get ready to get started. If you have your Bibles, Jeremiah 3 and 15. Yes, God. Jeremiah 3 and 15. Jeremiah 3 and 15. I got you guys at a distance today, so I'm trying something new and I'm looking at the comments here just to make sure that I can be able to still interact with you guys and see what you're saying <clears throat> thank you elder thurman my mother on the on the congratu congratulatory comment on the book thank you so much may the lord have his way thank you everybody for coming 
Thank you, everybody, for being here today. I give God praise that the Lord has allowed us, according to the Gregorian calendar, to cross over into a new year. And so we bless him and we praise him. Uh-oh. I just lost the page. One second. We thank him. Let me just go directly into... There we go. The page. There we go. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Jeremiah, the third chapter. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Jeremiah, the third chapter. Jeremiah, the third chapter. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can y'all hear me okay? Is the volume on y'all in okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you, Minister Roman. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Elder Minister Roman, Elder Thurman, Deaconess Dollison, Brother Tyrone, Sister Tracy, um, Brother John, uh, and everybody else that's on. Um, hope I didn't miss anybody. Um, Jeremiah, the third chapter. We're getting ready to start. Do, do, do. I'm looking for one other thing real quick. I think I see my brother, Arion James. Thank you for coming on. Um, <clears throat> one second. I'm trying to find one thing. Y'all go ahead and get your Bibles over there, please. Okay, Lord, well, where is it? I think it might be. One second. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, no. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Oh, Jesus, come on now. We're almost there. Jesus. Jeremiah 3 25. There we go. Luke and 19. That's what I was looking for. Luke and 19. Luke and Luke. Try to trick me. All right, let's get started. Mm -hmm. Three or 15. Y'all bear with me today. The Bible says in Jeremiah mm -hmm. 3 and 15, it says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's as far as we're going to go in that particular text. And so I wanted to talk to us today. The Bible classifies us as sheep. Well, how do we know that? Because he classifies our master as the great shepherd. And what does a shepherd does? He tends to sheep. 
The Bible says in John, the 10th chapter, that pastors are shepherds that tends to a flock. But then it goes on to say that the Messiah, the Christ himself, is the great shepherd. Meaning, although in Jeremiah 3 and 15, the Lord says, I will give you pastors, shepherds that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. But the shepherds that he shall give you shall be under the headship and the authority of the ultimate shepherd, which is, as the scripture says in John 10, the great shepherd, the word of God, Jesus the Christ, the one that became flesh according to John the first chapter, the gospel according to John, the first chapter, the 14th verse, I believe, or the 19th verse. But, but the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us is the great shepherd. He is the great I am. And so, well, God is the great I am, but you get what I'm saying. Because Christ said, before Abraham was, I am. Because Christ is in the I am. He is in the Father. And I wanted to talk about shepherding and sheep for a moment because the Bible also lets us know in the 10th chapter of John that the reason why we need shepherds is because that they will and, and, and I'm using this in a, uh, I'm, it doesn't say these words. It says they will, they will build up a hedge. They will, they will create a space at, 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 and a safe haven so that the wolf cannot come behind the fold, the gate, and devour God's sheep, right? It says, um, <clears throat> it says, it alludes to that there's a sheep. Fold. Well, it doesn't allude to it. It says exactly that. There's a sheep fold. There is a, a, a place of safety, a place of gathering that the sheep have and they find safety there. It's the place that they're fed. It's the place that they are protected from the wolves and, and dangers and, and all of these things. <clears throat> And so here we are in Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. It says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. And I just wanted to share with you guys, people of God, because I almost did a calling post and I understand now why God didn't allow me to do a, a, a two minute calling post because he wanted me to go a little deeper. On Tuesday, no, not Tuesday. Yes, on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, y'all, <clears throat> we, I expressed to the people on the conference call line, on the prayer line, that the Lord had said to me that we were not going to have the typical normal, because you know, many of you guys who, who are new to this church don't know, but we always have a watch night service on December 31st going into the new year. This, not I can't say this year, but this, well, I can't say this year, but this year is the first year that Soul Food, that I can recall, has not had a watch night service. Um, We may have not had it one other time. I can't re recall right now. But the Lord spoke to me and said that we would not have watch night service. <clears throat> and I put the 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 post i mean i i brought it to you guys and i said <clears throat> this is what the lord has said and then i went further on on that call and said hey guys let me ask you your opinions and let me ask you your preferences because you know when god gives me something i have to just do it exactly how he says but when he gives us room for input I always would like to include you. So in this instance, he gave room for input and I included soul food as a church, as a collective body. And I asked your opinions and I asked, what would you guys like to do? Would you guys like to meet since we're not going to have a watch night service? Would you guys like to meet 
um, are closer to 12 o'clock so that we can kind of be congregated at the time on the prayer call? Or would you guys like to meet at our regular time? And everybody said, oh, yeah, we'll meet at 8 o'clock p.m. And nobody showed up but one other person. And so, to be quite honest with you, people of God, you guys say that you appreciate my honesty and that I'm I'm real. So help me, help me, allow me to be real with the people that God has afforded me to pastor. I was disheartened. My feelings were somewhat hurt because I felt like, okay, if we not going to meet for the watch night service, and then I even also by the permittance of the Lord extra opinions on what you guys prefer as it pertains to our prayer call because it happened to fall on December 31st, watch night, I'm on, on, the, on New Year's Eve. And you guys gave all of your suggestions and you didn't even show up. I was disheartened. Only one other person was on the call. One out of all of the members in this church, one on watch night. And so we find ourselves here because this is what the Lord gave me to say to you. I and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And what the Lord wanted me to tell you is that we are not to abuse, not abuse, let's not take for granted the things in which he has given. I know we're not in a physical building right now, but y'all, we are a real church. And we should treat it like it's a real church. Because in the book of Luke, because in the book of Luke, <clears throat> I'm going to start at the 14th chapter of the 19th verse. I want you to hear this. But his citizens hated him. I'll give you time to get there if you want to go there. Luke 19 and 14. I hope y'all still love me. <clears throat> because this is a job function of a pastor. Sometimes the pastor has to correct. Sometimes the pastor has to rebuke. My responsibility is to not always make you feel good. My responsibility is not to always preach you happy. My responsibility is because the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians somewhere, it says, I will have you know that the head of, 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 the, of, of, of the man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of the woman is the man. What I'm saying is, is that I might be the pastor. And, and the, the shepherd that God put in this flock, over this flock. But I got somebody that I have to answer to, too, who is my head. The head of the man is Christ. So God holds me responsible for us. And so I have to tell you, John, Luke 19 and 14, but his citizens hated him and sent the message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money. And he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound have gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little. Have thou authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound have gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. 
And another came saying, Lord, in the 20th verse, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. I kept it to myself, for I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidst not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, out of thine own mouth, I will judge thee. Thou wicked servant, thou knew that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that have ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he have 10 pounds. Here it go. I had to start where the Lord told me to start. But here it go. For I say unto you that unto every one which have shall be given. And from him that have not, even that he have shall be taken away from him. So Jeremiah 3 and 15 and I will give, the Lord says to you. And if we are not, if we, if, if, if we take for granted the things that God gives us, the Christ said in Luke the 19th chapter that he can take that away. And see, people, I want you, people of God, I want you to know that church is not a cult. And I'm not here to try to make you robotic and to try to uh, manipulate you into anything or to 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 to, to be cultish and and not understand the humanity of us all. And that sometimes we we can't always be, you know, sometimes we can't sometimes we're not going to be able to make the prayer call. Sometimes we not we won't be able to, you know, be on Sunday service if there's a particular reason or something like that. So I'm not trying to manipulate God's people. But what I am saying is that God calls for faithfulness. We got to tighten up, y'all, because he said to those who have, those who are responsible over what he's given, he says he will look down and say, I can trust them to give them more. But when we don't, when we, okay, but when we're not responsible over whatever the Lord has given us, this kingdom principle says, even the little bit that you think you have, I can take that too. Have you ever noticed somebody that can sing, but they don't use their gift? And then they can't sing like they used to could sing. It's because they did not use it with usury. So then the Lord took it away. Ever seen somebody that can write or somebody that can preach and then they stop preaching and they can't preach like they used to preach because they was not faithful over it. So the Lord took it away. Not to say that he can't give it back. And it's not that he necessarily took it away completely. It's just it lost some of its savor, some of its saltness. And so people of God, I can only give you what the Lord is saying. This is not about a particular person. This is about all of us, all of us. And I'm going to be honest. This is why I wanted to talk to us about the sheep. Sheep need to be led. And I'm a sheep too, just because I'm, a shepherd of God's flock, I'm also still a part of the sheep. Overall, we all must be led by him, the head of our lives. <clears throat> and y'all didn't know that, let me say this, y'all didn't know I was writing this book, but when it came down to the last parts of it and getting into production and stuff like that, it was taking my attention and I alluded to it and I was saying little, little small things you know, saying, you know, I got some stuff I'm working on and da 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 and all this stuff. And it was taking my attention. And I know what my mom said, Elder Thurman said, she told me over the phone a few uh, about a few days last week. She said, 
You ain't, and I can't put it all, and I'm not going to sit up and lie on God either. I'm not going to put it all on this book. There was some other stuff going on in my life, and it was taking my attention as well. Um, but my mom said to me, Elder Thurman said to me, oh, you ain't, you know, she said, you ain't been preaching like you used to preach. You, she, you, she said, you used to be getting down, you know, because my attention was divided. And this is the reason why, not just with this, but with other things too, my attention had been divided. But we know that the devil is a liar. I can't lose my relationship with God. And so <clears throat> while I was working on this stuff and I know I wasn't giving you like I wasn't coming and giving you like strong, strong, strong word messages and stuff like that. But what I'm alluding to is sheep. If we are not shepherded, we easily get off course. We easily get off path. We easily can stop coming to church. We can easily stop showing up for the things that we're supposed to be faithful over because the kingdom principle says that if you get, see, it's not about me trying to manipulate you, but I have to teach you that in order for soul food to grow into what he really wants us to become, the Bible says it this way, that the kingdom of God is like a little bit of seed. It's small. It looks insignificant. It looks like it doesn't matter. But if you do what you're supposed to do with the seed and plant it, it grows into the largest tree, one of the largest trees that there is. And the fowl, the birds of the air come and lodge there and find rest. I'm not telling you and speaking to you and coming to you as your pastor in this way because I'm just trying to because I'm looking at numbers and because I'm because I got some type of chip on my shoulder and I just need to see how many people going to come. That's not what this is about. This is about kingdom. And the kingdom principle says is that in order for you to grow into something larger, you have to be faithful on the level that you are on already. And if we're not faithful and we come to church when we want to, we show up to prayer when we want to, God can't grow us like that. Again, I'm not trying to manipulate you and try to make your mind feel like, oh, if I miss church or if I miss, if I miss prayer, pastor going to say something. Pastor going to get me. No, I'm, I understand. We are human beings. We don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. But for us to not to even be striving to show up, to not to even strive to be where God gave us the very table that he set for us from with the pastor that he gave us according to his own heart. He says if we don't appreciate what he gave us, he can take that away too. This ain't about me trying to manipulate me. This or you. This is about me trying to show God's people. If y'all want us to grow, be faithful. And that includes me too. I got to be faithful to you, but I need you to be faithful to me as well. You know, and I was disheartened on, 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 on New Year's Eve because I had a lot to do. I had a lot to do, y'all. I had a lot to do on that date, but I still had to stop and put everything away to calm and put myself available for God's people. And God's people didn't even show up. That's not fair to me. I will give you pastors according to my heart says the lord he said i gave you this pastor these pastors these leaders because i know what you need and they're gonna feed you with knowledge and with understanding it does require faithfulness again i gotta keep saying this i'm not saying that if you can't make it then Oh, pastor going to fuss at me. No, because I understand this is real life. We can't always, 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 always. But you know what the thing about a relationship with God is? None of us are perfect when he's looking for our stride, our effort. And in our effort to serve him, he brings us to higher heights. In our effort to get it right. The Bible says a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. In other words, when I put my effort into God, I'm going to slip up I'm a, I'm a, sometime, but, but I, I'm going to get up and he's going to carry me to higher heights by way of my striving, by way of my efforts. It's our efforts that helps us to get to another place. Our efforts is what carries us from down here to up there. You might trip up on your way from here to there, 
But because you got back up from tripping up, you finally got to the next step. You finally got to the next place. You finally got to another level because you showed your effort and you refused to allow the devil to keep you down there. That's how you grow in God, y'all. And so I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to fuss, but I got to give you the truth. We cannot expect soul food to grow and the little people that we are ain't faithful. We got to show God that we appreciate what he has given according to his own heart. He said, out of my own heart, I've given you Pastor Williams. Out of my own heart, I've established Soul Food International Ministries for you because I know what you need. I've given you a shepherd to lead you with what you need. I can prepare the table, but you got to come and eat. I can't make you come to the table. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Turn with me to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Turn with me to Matthew, the second chapter. <clears throat> Matthew, 22nd chapter. Excuse me. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. If you can, hold your place in Matthew 19. Look at what Jesus said in the first verse. Well, actually in the second verse. Matthew 22 and 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come mm, Jesus and they would not come again he sent forth other servants saying tell them which are bidden behold I have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage but they made light of it. Mm, God, thank you, Holy Ghost. And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, he was angry, he was upset, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. But that ain't the part I'm going to go to. And then he sent... Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden, they which were invited, were not, well, well this God ain't saying you ain't worthy, I'm just reading what the scripture said, we're not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together. All as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. The Lord says, I give you pastors from my own heart because I see what you need. And out of my own heart, the Lord says, I will give you who you need to shepherd you, to pastor you, to feed you. The great feast has been prepared. But you have to choose to be the one to come and sit at the table. You have to choose to show up. You have to choose to come to church. You have to choose to come to prayer. You have to choose to say, okay, if God told pastor that service is at this time, then be there at that time. If God, I didn't make, listen, I didn't make this stuff up. I didn't just say, okay, hmm. I think I want to start a church and I think that I want to do it on this day and I think I want to hold prayer. No, we hold prayer because that's what God told me to do, told us to do. And he gave us the days and the time. So if God told pastor, this is the time that soul food is supposed to gather, can you at least put an effort in to be there at the table? 
I'm talking to all of y'all. If God gave us a banquet, if he gave us a setting and see, look at this, look at this. Now, don't get me wrong, because I know that the responsibility to find that physical place falls on me. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say that it's y'all's responsibility. I'm not. But we are one body. And what if the Lord is looking down at us and saying they talking about a building and they won't even show up on the phone? How much more should I give them a building to get in their cars and drive? If they ain't going to get on the phone, then how are they even going to go drive? Are they going to show up to the building if they can't even get on the phone? I'm talking to all of us. The kingdom principle is, is you have to be faithful on the level that he gives you. And when you are faithful on that level, then he adds more. Not the other way around. Not, oh, when we get the building, then I'm going to come to church. No, God says, my kingdom says, when you are faithful over a few things, then I'll give you more. We can't even get on the telephone, y'all. We can't even get on the telephone. And it's a telephone. You don't even have to leave your house. I will give you. This is what the Lord had me to say to his people. Jeremiah 3 and 15. As we go down from this place. We want a building. And we want to look. We want to, we want to have the choir. And we want to have. We want to have, you know, the praise team and we want to have a musician and we want to have the drummer and we want to have the ushers and we want to have all of the things that come with the church. But the kingdom principle says is if you're faithful over a few things, then I give you all that other stuff. Do you what, what do you think God is looking at us and saying? They talk about they want to build it and they won't even dial the number inside of their own home. They ain't got to drive. They ain't got to burn up their gas. They ain't got to go nowhere. All they got to do is dial the phone and they won't even do that. How we think he going to give us more? Oh, Jesus. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. He said, don't abuse what I gave you. Don't take for granted what I gave you. Do y'all hear me, soul food? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I can only give you what the Lord says. And if I didn't speak to you in this way, that would mean that I really don't love you. Because according to Hebrew, the 12th chapter, this is not me speaking. This is the Lord speaking. This is me speaking on behalf of the Lord of what he is calling for this church. And it's not just you. I got to tighten up too because I'm just being honest. I know that I haven't been all the way there. But I know that the Lord understood that I was working this. This I, I had to get this out. God gave me a timetable and I had to get it done. And so I know that my attention was divided. And I know that I wasn't as fully involved in soul food while I was secretly working on this. You know, I've been writing this book since July of 2019. Um, and so, but what I mean is, is that in the past month, you know, when it was time to like finalize it and all of that stuff, it really was taking, you know, my attention and my focus and I needed to, and God understood because this is an assignment from God. This is one of my life's assignments. This ain't just no, oh, this, oh, this, oh, oh, you just preaching something. No, this is one of my life's assignments. This is my mantle in here. Um, my mantle is represented in here, rather. Um, and so I understand, y'all, that, you know, like I hadn't been as strong with the messages and I hadn't, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I was working on another assignment from God. But what I'm saying, people of God, is that, y'all, so I'm saying is I got to do better, too. I can be better, too. I'm not going to leave y'all out there by y'all selves. I got I to gotta tighten up, too. And I vow to you that I'm tightening up, too. I'm not trying to make it one-sided. But, y'all, please respect your pastor and love your pastor and appreciate what God gave you. 
I know you can't come all the time, but try. God is looking at us. He looking at us, y'all. He looking at us, y'all. He said, I've given you pastors. I've given you soul food according to my heart. Show me that you appreciate what I've given you. Show me that you appreciate what I've given you because I'm ready to give you more. I'm ready to do more with your pastor. I'm ready to do more with you. I'm ready to do more overall with Soul Food International Ministries. But I cannot. It's God is saying I can't veer from my word. I'm not going to go around my word just to give y'all a building. No, my word says you got to be faithful on the level that I give you and then I'll give you more. God is not going to change his mind. He's not going to go around the corner. He's not going to show favoritism to us. He said, y'all going to have to do it the way my word says to show me your faithfulness on this level. So I can expand y'all. So I can put y'all in y'all building. So I can give you y'all land. Cause I, Dion, Pastor Williams didn't come, have no idea to come and sit down here on, 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 on resurrection Sunday, 29, 2020. Or 20, um, 20, 20, what is it? Yeah, 2020. That was the Lord. And he said, because I gave y'all this format, while you're not in a physical building, I still, I know you're not meeting and I know we ain't got the choir and we ain't got everything, but this is a real church. And he says, I need you to be faithful in the format and in the way and in the form that I've given you so that I can expand y'all. Let me say this last thing. The Lord showed me the reason why he had me to stand up. I shared this with who? Minister Roman, I think. Yeah, it was you, Minister Roman. Thank God for that conversation. The reason why the Lord had me to stand up last week to preach to you all, I had that. That wasn't something premeditated. As I was preparing last Sunday morning, the Lord says, stand up and preach. You know, he didn't use say stand up and preach. He just, you know, ushered my spirit and said, stand up. And, and he told me not just to stand up while I'm preaching, but not to even sit down through the entire service. And then afterwards, the Lord showed me, and as I shared with Minister Roman uh, earlier this past week, is that what the Lord was saying to me by me standing up, he was prophetically declaring over this ministry and over this house that he's ready to shift us back into physically meeting. He's ready to shift us back into the full operations of this church and not just where we come and just, you know, you see Pastor Williams and I, you know, give you a word from the Lord in this platform. He's ready for us to shift back into the full function and operations of the church as a whole where we gather, where other things go on other than just the word of God. Um, and that's why prophetically he told me to stand up last week. Because the stand up meaning that it's time to take a stand and it's time to bring the church back up to that place. And so, but again, lastly, but again, he's not going to change his word around for us. I don't care how much he loves us, how much favor of God we got on our lives. He said, you got to do it the principle, the way of the principle of the word. Be faithful over what I gave you, no matter how small and insignificant it might seem. I don't care if they got every, every other pastor you've ever known got a 300 seater building and whatever else the case may be. If God says you this is your church, he said that the kingdom of God is like a seed. It looks small. It looks insignificant. Us coming on Facebook live and we're not in a physical building. It might look small and it might look insignificant. But if it's planted, if we're faithful over it, it grows into a large tree and the fowl of the air, the souls that God has called for us is going to come. But we ain't going to get to that other place if we don't sow on the level that we're on. We got to be faithful on the level that we're on, because that is a kingdom principle. It is a kingdom responsibility. So let us all, myself included, all do better. Let us all be better. Let us all know that this is a real church and that it should be treated as such in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I love you. I thank God for you. God is good. I like the old, the, 
<laughs> like they say, God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for loving me. Thank y'all for walking with me. Thank you for, for your sacrifices and for your willingness to allow me to pastor you and to, to lead you and to teach you and to feed you with knowledge and understanding as the Lord has said. I thank God for your lives. Higher heights, y'all. Higher heights, y'all. It's time to go higher. The Lord is calling us to be full functional. Some of y'all got voices to sing. And you ain't used your voice in years. Soul Food International Choir is waiting on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Did y'all hear what I just said? The kingdom of God is within us. We got everything we need already in this church. God is going to bring things out of us that we didn't know was there. Or things that we knew was there that was dormant or we thought we lost it and we thought it wasn't there and we don't thought we didn't have it no more. Mm. It's, a, it's some people that the Lord is pointing out right now to me in the spirit. Hmm. Soul Food International Choir is waiting on you. Hmm. Jesus, my God. Woohoo, Jesus. Sister Shawana, Deaconess Dollison, Brother Darius. Uh huh. Time to put them voices to some use for the kingdom of God's sake. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God is ready to promote us, y'all. And the reason He had to speak to us in this way today because He said, I can't let. I, in other words, I don't want to let y'all miss the promotion that I have for y'all. He ready to promote us. He ready to elevate us. But he said, I had to have your pastor come and speak this from my heart to you because I can't go around my word. I have to, I have to raise you up according to what my word says. The Lord is saying I'm requiring of us all, including Pastor Williams, faithfulness faithfulness so I can go ahead and give you the next level that I've called this church to operate in. My God. Hallelujah. He says he's ready to show us the next level. He's ready to show us the next level. He's ready to take us to another place. So we give him praise. Y'all ready to pray? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I was getting ready to pray and the Lord said, don't pray yet. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, restructure us. Lord, raise us up. Father, we come before you collectively. Myself included, Lord, we repent. We repent for our faithlessness. Our faith. We, we, we repent, Lord God. But we hear you. And we receive your word. And God, we shift and we say we're sorry, Lord, and we, we ask that you forgive us for taking for granted what you've given us here in this ministry. And not just as you've given them pastor, I'm talking about the, what you've given us as to be able to, and what you've given us with one another. It's not just about pastor, but what you've given to this one through this other sister and what you've given to that one through this brother, because you called us to be to walk in oneness as a, as a church for a reason. 
you are strategic. And you know that not only are we going to be sharpened by what pastor has to say. But we're going to be sharpened and strengthened by just having fellowship and relationship with our brother and our sister next to us. Just the communion and the fellowship. Lord, we're going to be better because you put us all here in this particular set house. And so we repent, God, for not being as faithful as we should. But God, we vow to you and we promise to you today we'll be better. We'll be more mindful. We give ourselves to you. Keep not back your promises for our lives. For your word has told us that if we're faithful over but a few things, you will make us ruler over many. And so, God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your people having a receptive heart today. I thank you that the spirit of offense did not have its way and that the people heard your voice and they heard it in the spirit in which you have given it, God. And so, Lord, I bless your name and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless you that there is none other like you. You are holy, you are worthy, and you are worthy to be praised in the name of Jesus. And we so we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, touch every household, every marriage, every family, every child, every grandchild. Every nephew, every niece, every every person's finance, every person's body that needs a touch from you today. We ask that you touch us and heal us. We ask that you recalibrate us and not just as it pertains to soul food, but in our personal lives. Last week you told us that it was time to make adjustments. And Lord, we ask that you orchestrate us in that. We ask that you lead us in that. We ask that you make us better. We declare according to your word that you are the potter and we are the clay. Reshape us, God. Mold us into the vessels you have called us to be. I am I say. And Lord God, we are grateful for your presence. We are grateful for your love towards us. And so we thank you. And we bless you. Wash us by the washing of your word. Forgive us collectively and individually of all of our sin that we have committed against you. Sin in our thoughts, sin in our minds, sin in our hearts. Sin by the things that we have spoken and the things that we have done and the things and the motives of our heart. Forgive us. I'll be the first one to say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Wash your people. Raise us up to the place you have called us to be. That you might get the glory that you've intended always to get out of our lives. And I ask that you bring order into our lives. Bring your divine order into this church. Bring your structure. Bring your power. Bring your elevation. Bring your spirit. Bring your anointing. Put your people to work. And when I say put them to work, I don't mean in the sense of, oh, it's something grievous, but Lord, let them work the works of the Lord in a way that is fulfilling to them. That's fulfilling to them. Put them in their proper positions and place them in their proper places, Lord God. That they will have a sense of more greater fulfillment. And this is the reason why soul food has to be elevated. Because we know that, that the word of God is the main thing. But the people of God need to be able to operate in certain areas in the church and that is the reason why you're ready to take us off of this online thing by uh, in and of itself and to put us back into the normal functions of the church so that you can put your people to work so that your people can have a level of fulfillment in the operations of the things that you have called them to do in the set house of God and so God I give you praise and I thank you for all of your people every one of them you know them name by name and remember. And God, I don't know why you're having me say this, but God, even Pastor Vera Stripling, who's not a member, but she's a faithful supporter of this ministry. Touch her because you gave me her name. You told, you spoke her name to my spirit in this moment. Touch Associate Pastor Vera Stripling. Touch her body. Touch her mind. Touch her life. 
I thank you for preserving her. Thank you that she's the salt of the earth. Thank you, Lord God, that in her old age, she shall continue to bear fruit. And God, I thank you for her life. And I give you praise that it's not over, but greater things are ahead and are on the way for her, your daughter. And I give you praise. Touch Darius, touch Tracy, touch Tyrone, touch Shawana, touch LaShawn, touch Shirley, touch Javon, touch Fran, Lord God. Touch Keith. Touch Nicole. Touch us, God. Don't forget about Dion. I thank you, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Touch Kenneth, the Lord. Touch Corey Dollison, Lord. Touch our households, Father. The Dollison family, the Roman family. Touch Mother Evelyn, God. Touch Nana today, God. And I love a whole man, Sire. Oh, God, thank you. Touch our pets. Hallelujah. Let our homes be filled with peace and honor. Let godliness and your kingdom reign in our hearts and in our lives. Touch John Chibuiki Innocent. Touch him, Lord. In Jesus' name. And the John household. Touch the pastor of that compound, Pastor Ike and his wife. Touch the nations. Preserve us. Even concerning this vaccine that they're releasing. Lord, your will be done. As my bishop said, we can drink a deadly thing and it shall cause us no harm. But give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a good place. Anybody want to give their lives to the Lord today? If you're in a backslidden state, because what you... You know, the interesting thing about Jeremiah 3 and 15 that we came from today, the very first, the very first uh, before that says, turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Then he says, I will give you pastors according to his heart. So every one of us in a backsliding state, where we feel like God, I, knew, I used to know you more deeply. I used to hear you more clearly. Lord, deliver us from our backsliding states. Deliver us from our folly. Deliver us from the things that Satan has used to destroy our walk with you. We need your holiness. Loose your people from things that have us in bonds because the word says that if we're in Christ, we're new creatures and old things pass and all things become new. Refresh us in you in the name of Jesus. And to those who don't know you, who are under the sound of my voice, let this be the day that God, that you took on their heart that you knock at the door of their heart and that they hear you and that they understand what's happening and they open up them help themselves to you by simply confessing that they need you, that you are the that Father, that you sent the Christ, the Word of God, the Messiah, to reign in our hearts. Reign in us hearts, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. And those who desire to come to know you that don't know you, Introduce yourself to them today in the name of Jesus, by way of Christ Jesus. Fill us with your spirit, Lord.
Fill us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, mold us into what you have us be. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Elder Thurman, you can put the information up now. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so. And also, one second. I'm going to post a link for the book. And by the way, thank you everybody who has supported so far. Uh, the purchase of this book. If you like to purchase, I just placed the link at the bottom of this live. If you like to sow your tithing or your offering, can do so by going to our website. Some of us meet meet with me in person, which is totally fine. I actually prefer it, whether y'all know that or not. And the reason why is because those electronic things, they take small fees. We don't mind for the convenience of God's people. But I prefer, I don't mind meeting you. But um, um, to those who like to sow online, our church website is www dot sfim dot org you can locate the, doc, the donation page or you can just put sfim dot org forward slash donate and it'll take you straight there amen god bless you other thurman i see it on the screen and our church cash app is cash sign sfim atl as we get ready to go down from this place thank you everybody for being here today i love you we love you so very much. Thank y'all for allowing me to serve you. It's one of the greatest joys that I have in my life. I'll say this and we'll go. Many of you have heard me, some of you have heard me say this. I was in ministry for some time and when the Lord began to first call me to pastoring, I said, Lord, I don't want to be a pastor. I didn't want no part in that. But when the Lord began to do it, I went from, Lord, I don't want to be a pastor, to saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving me such an honorable task. I wouldn't take it back. This is one of the greatest joys that I've ever experienced in my life, being able to serve God's people in this way. I love you sincerely. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for hearing what the spirit was saying to the church and not looking at it as just some man just trying to fuss. Truly, this is what the Lord had to say today. And so I thank you for your for, for, uh, for your participation. <laughs> and so let's go down from this place in the name of Jesus. I hope everybody all right. God is good. Amen, Brother Darius. Thank you, everybody. I know I didn't see some of your comments. I'll go back and look at them. And thank you, guys. I love y'all so much. Brother Sean Smith, come on. God bless you, brother, if you're still here. Let's take it up. God bless you, sister friend. Happy New Year, everybody. The best is yet to come, y'all. God is with us. He's with you. Yeah, Jesus. He's with you. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what he tried to shoot at your mind. He's with you. 
Hallelujah. The favor of God is on you. And you might say, well, how is the favor on, my, on me and I'm struggling or I'm this or I'm that? That's the reason why you feel struggle is because Satan is trying to fight your favor. Satan is trying to fight what God has already sent from heaven down to meet your need. You are already favored. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and, is, and my God and no sorrow is added to it. It's added to your life. It's applied to your life. You are God's chosen. You are God's anointed. You are his vessels. He loves you. Mm. He loves you, people of God. He says he knows the thoughts that he has for you, sir, for you, ma'am. Greater is on the way for you. Ha! Jesus. Y'all, the best is yet to come. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Brother Darius. I see it on the screen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Happy New Year, everybody. As we go down from this place. Hallelujah. I guess I got to get up to end the live. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Go in peace. Jesus' name. Thank you. Happy New Year.